Thank you for your giving. God bless you as our prayer at this time. Pastor, you can come share the word of the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here tonight. We want to welcome everyone. And we do want to remember Friday night, okay, 6 p.m., dinner at the service and so on. And then we'll do something fun after that, okay? They had a good time. They went bowling on Monday. From what I hear, they had a good time. They told me who the winners were and what their scores were. There were a lot of good balls going on that day. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, uh, glad to be here. Glad that you're here with us in the house of the Lord. Came to receive a blessing from God. Yes, yes. Some continual encouragement. Amen. Thank God that God does encourage us and he lets us know that all things are possible. He gives us a reason to have faith. Amen. 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 Thank God for that tonight. Let's go ahead and go to our Bible reading. Okay, we're going to read out of a couple of different places uh, from the word of God. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I want to begin reading in verse 57. But thanks be to God, verse 57, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We want to go to 2 Timothy. We're going to be in chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Now I want to begin reading in verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. That's why we need to come and hear the word of God. Yes. It's able to make us wise unto salvation. Amen. We'll have faith in that word of God that we learn. Amen. That we hear. Okay. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Okay, so there you go. There's a good verse of scripture for you right here. Okay, 2 Timothy 3.16 for all of the naysayers who want to say, well, the Bible was written by man. Well, God didn't use an elephant to write it. <laughs> or an octopus. Yes, he used men to write it. But all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. We want to use these two portions of scripture with the help of the Lord. We want to preach about abounding in God's work. And let's go ahead and look to the Lord. Lord Rossi, so we pray, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be in your house. Holy Spirit, God, Pastor. Touch our hearts, make us more like Christ, and continue to build that conquering spirit in us. And we ask you, we thank you for everything you're going to do in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Began to learn at the end of chapter 8, uh, last night in our Bible study, that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And all these things that were mentioned there, for sister, we being made more than victorious. Amen. 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 Whole a myriad of things that was listed there, things that maybe we could use uh, as excuses for failure, but God doesn't list them there to give us excuses of failure. He lists them to show you that we have overcome all of these things yes. through the Lord Jesus Christ and to let us know that we can do anything and everything that God wants us to do. Amen. Amen. We have adequate supply or sufficient supply of everything that we need if we are saved if we are filled with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. brother sister we have more than what we need okay, to Amen. abound in the work of Almighty God it is sufficient okay, as he told 
the Apostle Paul, that his grace was sufficient for him, and it is sufficient for you and I. Yes. Thank God, it is enough. The grace of God yes. is enough. The favor of God upon your life is enough Amen. for you to abound, for you to succeed, for you to be an able minister of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Paul was writing to this church at Corinth, and he was telling them that we even have victory over death there in chapter 15. You go back a little bit. I think we touched on it just briefly last night in our Bible study, that we have even victory over death, how much more over the things in this life. Amen? Amen. We've got victory, brother and sister. Yes, the church, every believer. Now I'm talking, I use the verse of scripture dealing with us being able ministers, but you know, every one of us is a minister, whether you are called reverend or whether or not you have a license, you are a witness for the Lord. Yes. You're saved, you're a Christian, God wants you to minister of his grace. Amen? Amen. Two people. God wants you to minister of his word. Two people. Amen? Amen. He teaches you and I that we are to allow our words to be seasoned with the grace of Almighty God. Amen? Amen. That he's able to give us the words that we should know what we ought to say to every man about the hope that lies with you and I. Amen. Within you and I. That hope is not just for those who are called to be uh, different offices in the church. But every believer has a hope. Every believer, every person that is a saint, a child of Almighty God, Amen. has a hope in their life. Yes. And thank God, brother and sister, we can show that hope. We can communicate that hope. Amen. We can live that hope. Yes. And let people see it in our lives. We have a big job. Ahead of us. There's no shortage of people that need to be saved. Everybody needs to be saved. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. There's no shortage of people that need the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a big world that we are to reach for the Lord. Brother, sister, and thank God. Yes, it may be a big a big world, but we've got a big God. Amen. Amen. We've got an awesome God that is able to help Amen. you and I. And God has put us in our lives, in the place where we are, in his body as we've been exhorting as he will. Yes. God brought you here for such a time as this. Amen. Pastor, I'm getting ready to go somewhere else. Brother's getting ready to go to Okinawa on Sunday. I told him, you know what? We got a church over there. Yes. Okay, right out, right outside of Kadena Air Base, I think is where it's located. And you can go there. Is that right? Are you going to Kadena? He's going to Fatima. Kadena is the air base. The church is right outside the gate of that air base. And I know there's restrictions at times, but they do have shuttle buses that go from camp to camp to camp. They take them to different places. Well, you know what? God can make a way. God wants you in the house of the Lord. God wants you bringing your fellow Marines, your neighbors, your friends, people that you meet to the house of the Lord Amen. so they too can hear about the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And then you're in the world, they say, if there's a will, there's a way. Well, we've got a better saying, there is a God, and he makes a way, my friend. Yes. We've got all things are possible, and God can make a way. God has brought us in our life for, uh, to the place where we are for such a time as this, for this time. Yes, we have a big world to reach. But as I said, we've got a bigger God. Goliath was big. He was a giant brother and sister. But oh, thank God, little David wasn't alone. Yes. He had some faith in God. Brother and sister, his God and our God is with us. God was with him. Amen. God gave him victory. Though it was a big obstacle to overcome, with the help of the Lord, he overcame. And you and I can overcome also. Amen. Yes. Do you believe that tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. We can be encouraged in the Lord. Amen. Yes, Goliath is a big giant, but God is a bigger God, and that giant came down. There's a lot of people to reach, but brother and sister, thank God. Let's look at it another way. There's no shortage of people to reach out to. Right. 
Come on now. There's no shortage, brother and sister. There's plenty of people for you and I to reach out to, and every Christian can be busy about the Father's business, Amen. about God's work. There's no shortage in the work of God for people to help. Amen. And whether, whatever aspect God lets you help, Amen. there's enough work to go around. That's right. Amen. And we all have our part to play. Yes. Don't leave your part up to someone else. Yes. You do what God wants you to do. You be a part. And I appreciate people who you know, we're at the home and thank God for these brethren. We, uh, uh, they help. And, hey, Pastor, can I sweep the floor? Pastor, can I do it? Yeah, come on, go ahead. Thank you. And let them help. You know, that's what they need to learn to work for God. But, you know, it's not just that. Thank God for that. But we need help in other ways, brother and sister. We need others to be involved in the outreach. Yes. Huh? We need others to come on Saturday morning at about 11 a.m. Yes. As we go out in town and on the base and simply invite people to church. Amen. Huh? There's plenty of Marines that need to be reached in different camps all over that base. Yes. It's not just a couple, two or three, but every every saved Marine ought to be reaching out to their fellow Marines. Yes. So come and help us. Yes. You want to do something good for the world in which you live? There's nothing greater for you to do than to help win somebody to Jesus. Yes. Yes. Well, what if they got mental problems? Talk to me about it. God has straightened out your thinking. Yes. He did it for me. Huh? What if they're depressed? Talk to me about it. Yes. Gotta put a joy in that person's life yes. when they get saved. Yes. Huh? Yes. What if they got uh marital problems or this problem or the other problem? Let me tell you what the answer is to all of those problems. Yes. He is the solution to all of it. Yes. It's Jesus. Yes. Everyone needs Jesus, brothers and sisters. We got a lot of work to do. We got a big God that can help us to do the work. But God needs every one of us to do our part. Not only, not only in cleaning the church, people like to help with doing that. Thank God for that. I appreciate that. But also in our inviting, visitation, evangelism, soul winning, whatever you want to call it. Okay? But also in supporting the work financially. Yes. yes. Everyone has a responsibility to do that. We should pay our time and we should pay it correctly. Amen. Okay? We ought to, we ought to do that. Support the church. That is a blessing to you. Amen. Thank God. We can do that. We can do all these things. And together, brother and sister, we can, with the help of the Lord, God can build up and edify that body, that body of Christ. He can build up this local congregation. Yes. Amen. Are you here? Yes. Amen. Come on now. Right. God can absolutely strengthen each and every one in it. Yes. Not only strengthen the individuals in it, but God can do as we see in the Bible. It's the same God. He can add to the church daily. Such as should be saved. Amen. Let's not limit God. Right. God doesn't care if it's 2022. Right. God still saves people. Brother and sister. Right. He still delivers men and women from sin. Yes. Nothing has changed. God hasn't changed. Right. We think we've got it so bad. We go back and we read uh, in the word of God about the persecution that the early church faced. They didn't look, use that as an excuse. Brother and sister, God absolutely used them and he will use you and I. If we make ourselves available to God, we are able. With God, all things are able. We are conquerors. We are victorious. Yes. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Right. Huh? We can read about that account in the Word of God. Brother Sister, where Sarah was back there laughing in the tent as God began to reiterate his promise unto Abraham. And God knew she was laughing, but God wasn't laughing. Right. God is very serious. Right. God will do what he said he would do. Amen. And you know what? God did it. Yes, sir. God gave that old lady a baby. And they named his, his, his name Isaac, brother and sister. Because she was bouncing that boy on her knee as an old lady with the joy of the Lord. Yes. God fulfilled his promise to her and to Abraham. Church, our God hasn't changed. He will fulfill his word and his promises yes. to you and I. Amen. He tells us that we, we don't faint, brother and sister, in well-doing. In due time, we're going to reap and we pay.
faint not. Because not to grow weary in well doing. Don't get tired of doing right. Well, I asked this one to come to church. They didn't. I asked the other they didn't. You keep on asking. Yes. You keep on praying. Yes. You keep on doing what God wants you to do. Yes. Don't grow weary. God's going to give you some victory. God's going to give you some fruit. And God's going to help you. And with him, we can abound in the work of the Lord. It can't be because sometimes things don't go our way. We can't get down in the dumps and be unstable and double-minded. When we're double-minded, we are unstable. James wrote to us about that. But we, we don't need to be that way. We need to be rock solid, brother and sister. Let's yes. trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's let God give us that victory in our lives. Praise God anyway. Yes. Praise God anyway. Thank God, brother and sister, we can do it. God is able to work through you and I. Brother and sister, we need to realize, we need to realize, brother and sister, that not, not only will God give us victory in what we do, but God will give us victory as we've been learning in the book of Romans over the greatest obstacle that any of us face. It's not the world. It's not other people. It's ourselves. Yes. Amen. And God can give us victory over ourselves. God can give us victory over doubt in our mind. Yes. God can give us victory over fear in our mind. Yes. God can help us to be unashamed. Amen. Come on now. Amen. And God's looking for men and women who are unashamed. Yes. Amen. We can have victory, brother and sister, over ourselves. We can have victory, brother and sister, not only over ourselves, but over our emotions, over our thoughts, over our flesh. God can help us, brother and sister. We read to you, secondly, uh, this evening out of 2 Timothy, uh, beginning in chapter 3, I believe it was in verse 14 that we began to, began to read. And this man, he was not some old, experienced preacher. He was a man that God needed to step up and take a position in the church in Ephesus. Yes. Paul was going to, is locked up now. You can't depend on him to come and do it. You got to step up. Yes. You know, yes. things change. Yes, they Life do. goes on. Yes. Amen. Amen. Things don't always stay the way that they are. Yes. It may have been okay at one time for us to kind of be a baby and let other people do things. But then when God looks to us to step up. Yes. And to mature Amen. and to grow. Amen. Huh? Yes. God's got a place for you and I to stand in the gap and Amen. take up the head. Yes. Come on, church. Yes. You know what that's about? Amen. Okay, they would go off to battle and they would have ranks of men, uh, and, and one would fall, maybe one would get wounded or hurt or die, and another would have to come in and take up that spot and fill that gap. So the enemy couldn't come through. Well, things change. You know, God's looking for people to step up and to step in that place. Yes. Can I fill that gap? Yes. Why? So we continue to march forward, Amen. defeating the enemy. Yes. Pastor, oh, are you sure we're defeating the enemy? Look at the world in which we live. Brother and sister, one person gets saved. Yes. There is rejoicing in heaven. Over one sinner that repents. Yes. What are you talking about? Amen. You're looking at it the wrong way. Amen. We were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Right. Every individual that gets saved is a victory yes. for Almighty God. Amen. They were already lost. Yes. They were already separated from God. Amen. God is the one that is sending his people into the enemy's camp Amen. and taking back. Yes. Yes. What he stole from God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Taking them back, brother and sister, one soul at us at a time. Amen. We, as Timothy, can be, can be fruitful for the Lord. Look at this young man and the responsibility that he was given. He was a pastor of a church there in Ephesus. He was training people for the ministry. He needed to follow scripture. He needed to continue in what he had been taught. Some of us have been taught. Mm -hmm. We need to continue in what we were taught. Yes. Amen. If you didn't do it in Graham, why are you doing it here? 
Yes. Right. If you can do it there, you can do it here. Yes. Amen. Come on now. Amen. We didn't do it in seminary. Why are we doing it here? Amen. That's not what you know. I remember little small things I was taught. There's things that stick with me in my mind. I remember that they, they, they teach you some very practical things when you go to school. Okay, thank God for that. I needed to learn them. Okay, but it's weird. Some things stick out to you, and thank God for all the spiritual things that I was taught, but I was also taught how I should act around people, how I should dress, how I should carry myself. Yes. You know, you getting respect, okay, is more than you having this card in your pocket. Yes. Where is my card? There's my card right there. You don't have a card, card, card. I got my card right here, my friend. Yeah. There's my card. Okay. Wait a minute. It's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get it out now because I already opened my mouth. Anyway. <laughs> It's more than having a card. Yes. Okay? Yes. It's more than having a piece of paper. Yes. We gotta have a life to back it up. Yes. Amen. We want people to respect us. We gotta give them something to respect. Yes. Amen. 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 Come on now. Yes. You gotta give them something to respect, brother and sister. Amen. Okay? We, we've been taught things, and there's things that, that we did things a certain way at one time. Uh, why, are we, why are we drawn back from that? Why are we allowing things in our life that we used to not allow before? Because Reverend so-and-so is not here, Reverend so-and-so is not here. God's here. Yes. Amen. God's here. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay, God's here. Okay, let's not back up. I remember being taught. I remember specifically Pastor Olson teaching. Now I have a belt on. Okay? You've never seen me wear a suit without a belt. Mm -hmm. It's true. Because he said one time in practical theology, you're not dressed properly mm -hmm. if you don't have a belt on. Mm -hmm. And even when I wear casual clothes at times, you know, that may if I'm around the home, I may not put my belt on, but if I'm going out in the town, I'm not dressed right. And I don't always wear shirts that I tuck in. They, people, people ain't going to know that I got a belt on or not. But I know, and I remember what I was taught. And God, by, and that's overboard, Pastor. Well, it may be overboard to you. Okay? But I, wanna, I want to take heed yes. unto my instructors. Amen? Amen. I want to take heed under my instructors. We, we were taught, and that's just something simple, and I understand that. But you know what? Uh, God, God will deal with your heart that way. God will teach you things. And, and God will challenge you to, to, to step up and, and to do what we know that we can do. Yes. And sometimes we allow ourselves to be distracted. Yes. Yes. Hmm? You know, God called me to be a minister. First and foremost, that's my calling of God. Yes. Not some other thing. If I'm doing something else that is detracting from what God has called me to do, then I'm putting that first. That's true. Amen. I need to put what God wants me to do first. Amen. I can do that later. Yes. Or not do that. Right. Or spend less time doing that. Right. Because I need to be ready for what God wants me to do. Yes. Amen. I need to be an example. Yes. Are you with me today? Yes, amen. Okay? I need to be an example. Yes. I need to be what God wants me to be. Amen. Okay? It doesn't just, just come automatically. I don't, you know, uh, somebody's being disrespectful to me. Are you are you showing them an example that commands respect? Hmm? Mm -hmm. I like to joke around. But you know, my Bible tells me to be sober-minded, especially if you're young. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. I like to I like to play around. I got two examples right here. I don't go around harassing Joe and Cam all the time. No. Not at all. She harass you. <laughs> she does. <laughs> and we love Sister Cam. She's yes. a blessing. Yes. We're not gonna do that. No way. I don't want to lose their respect. Yes. Thank you. Okay. We don't want to lose their respect. Emmy, let's go on. Okay. Thank God, brother and sister. God can help us to be fruitful. We can continue in what we have been taught. Okay, as, as Paul wrote to Timothy, God had given him and us what we need to be, brother and sister, to absolutely abound in the work of the Lord. Yes. Timothy needed to follow scripture. 
He needed to continue in it. If any man purge himself of these, 2 Timothy 2 and 21, okay, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet or appropriate, proper for the master's use yes. and prepare unto every good work. Okay? Praise God. Thank God for that. Our sufficiency, brother and sister, is of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3 and beginning in verse 1. Do we again commend, do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Yet ye are epistle, ye, excuse me, ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in the fleshly tables of the heart. You know what Paul was saying? He said, I don't need anybody to write a letter to commend me. Yes. He said, you people in this church that are saved are my letter. Amen. Yes. Uh, it's not written with a pen. Okay, it's not written on tables of stone. Yes. But God has written his word in your heart. Amen. They were proof of his ministry, brother and sister. They declared, they were manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not in tables of stone, but in the fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves. He wasn't boasting, brother and sister, but he knew where his sufficiency came from. Yes. He knew who it was that was working in his ministry. Amen. Because he had given himself to his ministry. We have to wait on our ministry, are we not? Okay, that's what I mean. What are you doing? I'm waiting on my ministry. I'm going to get here. Mm -hmm. No, waiting on it like somebody waiting on a table. Yes. Huh? You serve it. Yes. Huh? You give attention to it. You see what it needs. A good waitress, you don't have to ask her for any water. She's looking. Yes. And she sees it's getting low. We need to get some more water over there. Yes. Come on now. Amen. A good minister ought to watch his ministry. And no, oh, uh, maybe the water's getting kind of low. Yes. I need to get along with Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let that river of living water flow out of my belly. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. We need to wait on our ministry, brother and sister. Come on. Okay. Well, I'm not in the ministry. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, are you in a church? We're in one right now. Yes. You're a member of the body of Christ. You're in the ministry, my yes. friend. Okay, you are in the ministry. God uses all of us, brother and sister. Uh, we go on here. Not that we're sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who has also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. We are. We can be bound, brother and sister. We can absolutely, excuse me, we can abound with the Lord and with one another. Yes. We can be someone that God can look to. And we can be someone that others can look to. Amen. As an example. Yes. You ever know somebody and you know they were rock solid? Yes, you didn't have to worry about them. They weren't going to be defeated. Amen. I can go talk to brother so so he ain't going to be defeated. I'm going to be encouraged. Yes, sir. We can be that. Yes, sir. We can edify one another, brother and sister. We can absolutely encourage one another. We can be faithful to the Lord. We can be faithful to one another. Come on now. Listen to this. Okay. 2 Timothy 2 and 2. And the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Don't be ashamed. Somebody asks you, why do you go to church so much? You ought to open your big old mouth and tell them. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we tell them about other things. Yes, Come on down. Yes, Man, we can give them all kinds of details about other stuff. Let's tell them about Jesus. Amen. 
Let me tell you why. Let me tell you about that hope that lives in me. I was lost and on my way to hell. Yes, sir. I was undone. I didn't even know why I was living. But one day somebody told me about Jesus. Amen. And I prayed and I put my faith in him and he changed me. Amen. God is real. Yes. I've been born again. Hallelujah. I'm not the man I used to be. Amen. You know, God did it for you and I. He can do it for them. Amen. Now, now therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners. Okay? We're talking about this in our Bible study out of Romans. How now that we are children, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. In whom also you are building together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. God has brought us together. Yes, he has. God has put the pieces together Amen. as he wills, brother and sister. Yes. For what reason? So that God can dwell in you and I. Right. Amen. So that body can be edified yes, and it can be added to. Amen. It can be added to. We are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, we can abound in the work of the Lord. Get ready to close. He's going to come and play and sing. We're going to come and pray. Are we abounding tonight? God has spoken to our hearts about things in our lives. Maybe that we need to change some things that we're doing. Let God take some things out. Let God add some other things in. Make us more effective yes, Lord. and a better witness for the Lord. Yes, Tonight as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to God, God is challenging us to go deeper, deeper. Yes. Hallelujah. Higher, higher. Amen. Come on tonight, let's come and pray. God's looking for a few good men. Come on tonight. Let's give our hearts and our lives to Jesus. Thank you, loving God.